Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo. This week we continue work on the wind generator. Hopefully we can complete the install this week so we can get our butts moving again. So grab a drink, climb aboard, and let's get going. The first order of business was to sand the wedge into a shape that would allow me to mount the wind generator flush on the deck with the flanges that I had made. I had mentioned in previous videos that my GoPro, one of my Go GoPros had been messing up lately and unfortunately you guys are not going to get the thrill of watching me sand a block of wood. I, I know it's, you would have loved to have seen it, but unfortunately it's some of the video that my GoPro botched. So <laughs> let's fast forward through these static shots. After all of the cutting and sanding was complete, I was left with a wedge that would allow me to mount the wind generator as level as you can ever get on a boat. <laughs> and I will have to replace this wedge later, so I wasn't worried about it being perfect right now. When the mounting wedge was complete, I could no longer put off the most nerve-wracking part of this whole thing, and that was drilling holes in the deck. <laughs> I was a little nervous about this. I had never drilled holes in the deck before, and you really kind of only get one shot at it. So once I made sure everything was gonna line up, I went ahead and test fit everything, and then I started one at a time drilling the bolts, and I put a bolt in each hole as I went, just to make sure that everything remained in alignment. When I had all of the bolt holes drilled, I had to go ahead and remove the metal flange. The metal flange has a diameter, the inner cutout portion of 1.9 inches, and the hole saw that I had was 2.0 inches. So I had to remove the metal flange and try and drill as level as I could through the wooden block and the deck. The wedge and the deck combined were too thick to go through with one pass of the hole saw. So after getting through the wedge and into the deck and I had a good path started through the deck, I went ahead and removed the cedar wedge and drilled the rest of the way through the deck. Once I had all of the wiring secured inside of the pole, I decided to go ahead and get the pole primed and painted. The first step of doing this was to degrease the pole. Uh, these steel poles come with a lot of cutting fluids and cutting greases and oils and stuff on them. So I had to get all of that off to ensure that the primer and the paint stick properly. So the first thing I did was took some goof off, which is just a solvent, and removed as much of the oil as possible. I also had to remove as much of the excess expanding foam sealant as I could, and I was too lazy to go back to the boat to get a scraper or sandpaper, so here you can see me attempting to use the back of a saw <laughs> to try and scrape it off. At the end, I finally went and got some sandpaper and did it the right way. I did end up going with carbon steel for the pole and the flanges for two reasons, because it was available in a small town and uh, to wait for 304 or 316 stainless would have taken another week or two. And also the cost, uh, you guys know my financial woes as of late, so carbon steel was about a fifth of the cost of what stainless would have been. So even if I have to replace it in two or three years, um, I'll be very happy because that means I'm still cruising in two or three years. <laughs> and that, That'll be a personal win, uh, you know, so uh, since it is carbon steel, I did have to get it painted and protected as well as I could. So I primed it with two coats of primer and then painted it with two coats of white paint. Thankfully, during this week in Bellhaven, the weather was quite nice, actually, and I was able to get two coats done each day. I had to spray one side, let it dry for about an hour, then roll it over and spray the other side and then wait two more hours and then I could repeat the whole process. So I got the priming done in one day and the painting done on the second day. On most fiberglass boats, the deck core is actually made of wood. It's a 
very light wood, but it's very strong, and it's sandwiched between two pieces of fiberglass, one on the top and one on the bottom. When you drill through the deck, you do need to protect that wooden core from getting wet. So what I did was hollowed out a section of the wood core around the big hole that I drilled, and then I over-drilled the smaller bolt holes. I drilled them a, a size up, and then I went back and filled in all of the holes with epoxy. Then I came back later and re-drilled after the epoxy had dried. I re-drilled through the epoxy, and that left the wood core completely isolated from both the bolts and the pipe itself. So around all of the pipe is epoxy, and that joins to the top and the bottom of the deck, and around the bolt holes is epoxy as well. And that is just in case any water ever run, runs down the bolt holes or down the pipe, uh, it will prevent the inner wooden core of the deck from getting wet. Now that everything was prepped, it was time to get the wind generator installed on the pipe. Uh, I did have some concerns about the wind generator working nicely with my solar system and my lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I called and talked to both Battleborn, which is where I got my batteries and uh, my solar system set up from, and I did call and talk to Primus as well, the makers of the wind generator. So the wind generator has a smart regulator in it, and it comes uh, from the factory set to reach its shutoff point at 14.1 volts. So it has a variable voltage output, so it monitors your battery voltage, and it always puts uh, or gives off a voltage just higher than your battery output voltage, so that'll trigger your batteries to start charging, which is a good thing and that voltage output will ramp up as your battery bank voltage ramps up as it becomes full. And you can actually change the voltage regulation set point. There is a set screw on the side of the body of it. Um, and I could actually change it to 14.4 and that would match what my solar system is at. It's designed to shut down at 14.4 volts. So once it reaches that point, the batteries are full and then it goes into something which is called a float. And the float voltage on the solar system is set at 13.5 volts. And the wind generator has a, it's a factory offset. So once it reaches whatever your voltage regulation set point is, it will automatically drop down to also a float voltage. But that float voltage is not you're not able to set it. It's a hysteresis. It's an automatic offset of 0.6 volts. So if I changed it up to 14.4, the float voltage on the wind generator would be 13.8, um, which is above what the solar system would be at 13.5. And that wouldn't damage anything. It would be totally fine. One would just take over from the other. Um, the Primus wind generator is designed to work in conjunction with solar systems. So it, it's works very well that way. I decided to leave it at 14.1 volts, so when it dropped down into float, its float would match the float of my solar system. And by the time it reaches 14.1 volts, my battery bank is already 98 to 99% full. So at that point, I'm not concerned if it shuts down a little bit early. And the solar can either get it the rest of the way, or the next day we can top it off. I would rather our float voltages remained consistent across the system. I don't know if that's correct. I think either way will work. Um, when I talked to the two companies, they made it sound like it was pretty impossible for anything to get damaged. It's all protected from that. So that's the way I decided to set it up. The first thing I had to do to get the head of the wind generator mounted on the pole was to do all of the electrical connections. So I soldered the electrical connections to the wires I had in the pole and to those on the head, and then I taped them with electrical tape, and I knew it'd be a little bit of a struggle to get all of the wires down in the pole, but eventually we got them in there. Once I managed to get all of the wiring down inside of the pipe, it was as simple as just tightening down the pipe collar.
After the wind generator head was wired and attached to the pole, I had to put together the blade assembly and the nose cone and attach the nose cone to the head of the wind generator. Once the wind generator was assembled, it was time for the final install, and I went into this knowing it was going to be a major pain in the butt, <laughs> and I tried to have maximum patience. Towards the end, I did uh, let slip a few four-letter words, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. So, the first thing I needed to do was to mount the cedar block and the flange onto the pipe, so I could insert the pipe through the deck and the flange would be above deck level. The final part was going to be the very trickiest. So, in order to get the pipe to go through the deck, I knew I had to feed all of the wire through the center of the pipe. But once I got the pipe through the deck, I needed the wire to come back up through the pipe and out that one inch hole just below deck level so I could wire the wind generator into the exist existing electrical system. I knew that was going to be extremely difficult because it's six gauge wire and to have two wires going down and two wires coming back up, it was a very tight fit. And to make things more complicated was I can't fit in the rear hatch anymore uh, because of the battery bank that's back there. Um, it's I can sit on the battery bank and reach in there, but at that point you're doing everything by feel. and to try and feed those wires back up the pipe I knew it was going to be impossible from that angle. So I had to try and get the wires to come back up and sit just inside that opening so when I got the pipe down through I could block the pipe at the base so there was no pressure on the wires and then pull the wires back through. It took a few tries but eventually I did get it done. Um, it was a little frustrating towards the end, but I knew this was going to be very difficult um, when I thought of this idea. So, um, so it wasn't too bad. You know, I was expecting it to be bad, and it was bad, but we got her done. So once I got the wires back through the pipe, then I could mount the bottom flange, and then the pipe would be secure, and I could um, secure the deck flange, and then all would be good. And I did that, and then finally the last step, which I didn't show here, it's very simple. There's a red and a black wire, and I just tied those into my bus bars uh, for my solar system. So there's one main red, one main black, and I did put a 40 amp breaker uh, switch on the red or the hotline going to the bus bar. That was recommended um, by Primus um, in case there was an overload. So that's what I did. So it's just as simple as landing your two contacts with your breaker, and away she goes. And that wraps up the wind generator install and does it for this week. I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Literally, you guys make these videos possible. You're the only reason they exist, so thank you so very, very much. And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Edwin Sauter, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Joan and Jim Linbo, Sherry Erickson, and Deb Shaw. Thank you guys so very much. If you are interested in becoming a member of our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below. And that gives you access to our Patreon page, which has a bunch of extra bonus videos and photos. And starting next, next year, so in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing six videos per week and two of them are going to be patron only and um, they're going to be full length videos just like these but only you need to be a patron member to see them. And patron starts out at around three dollars a month so it's very reasonable and that'll give you access to 99.9% .9 of the content on there um, and we would appreciate the support so follow that link if you're interested. Uh, if you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton as well. And uh, I hope you guys are well, and we'll see you next week.